Good morning. Well, I want to talk to you about taste today. Not the kind that we use our mouths for specifically, but rather our inclinations towards things. Um, <clears throat> this is not necessarily, uh, we're not talking about our specific choices and our specific preferences, but just what's inside of us that, that drives us towards something that we love. So, and I want to use that to, uh, I want to use a couple stories to illustrate that, some friends of mine. Um, I have a friend who, like myself, loves beer. Um, and after graduating from Sanford and entering the workforce, he started experimenting with different styles. Um, aside from the mass-produced light lagers of keg standing and shotgunning fame, you guys all know what I'm talking about. So my friend really fell in love with beer. Um, but more importantly, he developed a really impeccable taste in beer. Um, but as he was going to grocery stores and liquor stores and trying to find new things to try, he realized that a lot of the world's best beers weren't available on Alabama's shelves. So he started an organization. Um, this organization's sole purpose was to advocate gourmet beer um, and also to remove legislative barriers um, in the state of Alabama. A lot of the reason he couldn't find those beers is because there was a 6% alcohol by volume limit on beer sold in the state. So this group's called Free the Hops. Some of you may have heard of it. And since its 2001 inception, Free the Hops has helped to pass the Gourmet Beer Bill, which has raised that 6% limit to 13.9%. And more recently, the Brewery Modernization Act, which <clears throat> allowed our, among other things, allowed our local breweries to establish tap rooms to showcase their really delicious beer. So I've got another friend who was in school in Chicago um, when he had an epiphany moment with coffee, um, which is my specialty. Um, it was a cheap home espresso machine, and after that, after that experience, he went and he learned as much as he could about coffee. Um, <clears throat> and once he's exhausted all of his resources and had a lot of interesting experiments with home roasting and brewing, he decided to move back to Birmingham and start Primavera Coffee Roasters. Now at the time, and still as far as I know, Primavera Coffee Roasters is the only roaster in our city and our state that's dedicated to roasting specifically specialty grade coffee. What's more, they're employing techniques that are now a little more common, but at the time were completely unheard of, both in the method of roasting and brewing coffee. Um, and even better, Primavera is dedicated to educating everybody that walks in the door about specialty coffee and why it's important. Um, since that time, Primavera has become a, a fixture in Birmingham and a leading light for specialty coffee, and I'm very thankful to be a part of one of several businesses that are thriving based on that specialty coffee model. So what's important about these stories? And what does that have to do with taste? See, these two friends of mine, they had strong loves and passions for one thing. But more than anything, they had impeccable taste in something. They knew how to identify what was good and what was the best. Um, these people took huge financial and social and personal risks. Their identities are completely wrapped up in this concept that they've attached themselves to. And you know, I think we need more of that. We, uh, <clears throat> we need more people to identify and embrace their one thing that they love. <clears throat> you see, community planning and organizing is, is beyond me. It's, it's daunting. There's a laundry list of things to do, and there's an even longer list of obstacles in the way of making progress. And so, Instead of tackling all this stuff head on and encouraging everybody to do that, why don't we encourage people to do that one thing that they love? You see, these people that are doing these things are changing the tastes of communities. So we're sitting in a room full of people in a city full of people that all have passions and loves for something. Um, what's more, they all have impeccable taste in something. And I believe that these people are going to do their best work when they're doing what they love. So, if your thing is community organizing, by all means, please go and do it. But if it's cooking, if it's teaching, if it's brewing coffee, if it's climbing rocks, go and do it. Become the best at it and share it with people. You are going to help change the taste of our communities and advance us forwards. Um, today, we're talking about Waking the Giant. You've heard a couple speakers. Um, you're going to hear more speakers that have led extraordinary lives and are doing extraordinary things. But what I want to leave you with is the fact that you and the people out there are the giants that were waking up. You'll hear this repeatedly today, but I want to say it again. You are the giants that were waking up. 
And the people out there are those that we need to wake up as well. So if you don't hear anything else today that I've told you or that you'll hear from other speakers today, don't just sit and listen. Please don't just sit and listen. Go out, find out what it is that makes you happiest. It doesn't always lead to a career. Sometimes it's just a hobby. Sometimes it's a nonprofit. But go and find it and do it. Share it with people because that is going to help our communities wake up to brand new futures. Thanks.
That was Duquette Johnston from the Gum Creek Killers. He's a local singer, songwriter, and kind of jack of all trades. Um, you know, in an economy like this that we have right now, in the job market that we have, it's no surprise that entrepreneurship is something that we're continuing to talk more about. And we continually see an uptick in entrepreneurial activity here in Birmingham. We've got things like Innovation Depot and other incubators that are starting to grow here because we're resolute people. We're trying to create jobs. We're trying to find our way in that. Um, so the, our speaker next is going to talk about entrepreneurship, and her name is Tanvir Patel. She's a serial entrepreneur. She started a company called Circle Source, and uh, sold that in the last couple years, and is on to her next venture. And that's where she asked me to stop. She didn't want me to steal her thunder. So with that, we'll ask you to help me in welcoming Ms. Tanvir Patel. I have a dream. A dream that's big, bold, and beautiful. And I do have the fire in my belly to make it happen, to make it a reality. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about my journey of entrepreneurship. And um, if you think about it, and you know, there are, it's very important to have goals. But more important than having goals is, are you ready to make that happen? So if you have two groups of people, and the, one, and, and the goal is we want to climb Mount Everest. And you have one group of people that show up uh, with flip-flops, okay? Or probably maybe some shoes like mine, <laughs> like this. Do you think, are they going to, the chances of them reaching those goals, what's that gonna be like? And then you have another group already prepped up and they have all the things in their, in, their, in their backpack. And so they have a backpack, they have a backpack, they have all the right shoes, they're all geared up to go on that trip, to make that journey. So there it is. So it's very important to plan. It's very important to be ready. And in order to take the entrepreneurial journey, what did I take, what did I, what did I pack in my pack, backpack? Do you all wonder what that is? So in my backpack, I kind of put some very key items. And every CEO needs to have certain traits. Every CEO needs to have certain traits. And I'm going to share with you what those traits are. It's the passion, the discipline, the determination, and willing to make sacrifice. And if any of these are missing, you're not prepared. So, so, get, so let's get ready and let's put all those things into our backpack and, and I'll take you through, throughout my journey. So the journey begins where the um, first and most important part of it was the determination. And I'm gonna to talk to you mainly most of my uh, presentation is going to be about two, I'm gonna bring the two universe and tell you how I built my world. So there are management issues and there is business issues. So business part is the environment. It's the environment in every stages of life. So the company, when you start a company, right from the inception to maturity, there are several stages and every stage has its own challenge. So within those uh, stages, it's very important for you to know where it's very important for all of us to know where we are, where we already know our destination, we know our goal, where we wanna go, and how are we going to get there. The management issues are going to be the concerns. If you're not doing those in those certain stages, that is a problem, and that is a concern. Change is a part of our life as we grow up, right from when we were little kids to when we grow old. Change is part of our life. So it is an entrepreneurial journey. Change is part of us. And there are two kinds of people. One, if you are, do not want change and you have a hard time accepting change, making that change to happen. So it's either you can be smart and understand that there's a change coming and adapt yourself to that change or change is gonna be forced on you. So either way, change is the reality of life. So let's be smart and let's think about how we are going to make those changes in our lives. Um, when you start a company, 
And there are certain things that, is, that become very important. There is the inception, the concept stage. During the con concept stage, having a clear vision is very important. Okay, you need to know where, what that vision is. Where are you gonna go? And what are you gonna do? The strategic alliances are very important in the structure of the organization. So as I'm, I'm talking about the business structure, the business environment, and later on I'm gonna to go to the management part of it. So in the business environment, the structure is very important. The, um, what is your objective? You know, what is your vision? The style, the management style. Most of the time it's a one-man band. And I was the only one that, you know, in the very beginning when I thought about what am I gonna do, and I need to build this company. And let me see from my backpack, what is some of one item that I'm gonna remove today, right now, in this stage, and that is the determination. When I was told in India, when I wanted to run my father's company, I was told that I was a woman, and I didn't have the experience, so it's not possible for me to run a company. And I was determined, so the determination part came from there, that I am going to run a company and I'm gonna make this happen. So during the inception, concept stage, some of those things are important. Money obviously is important. So guess what? Friends, family, and fools. 